This is the second in a series of tutorials on using Google Forms. If you haven't watched the first tutorial, we invite you to click on the link that appears on your screen, which will take you to that tutorial. In this section of the tutorial series, we're going to look at completing the form and then also how that data translates into our spreadsheet. So, in our last session, we created this form. And in this one, we're going to just show you how easy it is to complete the form. So, in this case, we've got a checklist. Remember the checklists, we can check all of them. And now, remember, we had created a page break here, so that translates into a continue button to take us to the next page. And you can see how easy it is to complete this form. Even a fairly lengthy form can be done quickly. When we're done, we simply click Submit. And that's all there is to completing the form. Now the real power of Google Forms is in the fact that as soon as that data is entered, it's put in a spreadsheet automatically. So here's the spreadsheet that's associated with that form that we just filled in. And here's our data complete in our spreadsheet so that you can see that all of our answers are transferred into the spreadsheet. Every person who responds to the form will have his or her answers appear in a single row of the spreadsheet. Now, from here we're going to make a jump. I'm going to enter some more data off screen so that we can look at analyzing this data in a moment. Okay, I've added a little bit more information to our spreadsheet by filling out the form with a few more names and data. So now that when we visit the spreadsheet, if we scroll up here, we're going to see that we've got data for about five or six people in here. One of the things you can do to make the spreadsheet a bit more legible is take these columns and adjust them, the ones that have more data in them. Make them wider. Make the others that have short one-word answers in them narrower. And in that way you'll be able to fit more of your data on the screen. Paragraph answer, it's always good to have that one fairly wide. Now, we need to be able to analyze this data. So, one of the most common functions that's useful for creating formulas is the COUNTIF function. So, we're going to show you how to create a COUNTIF function. What I've done here, down below, is I've taken the answers that are possible in column B, and I've put them pardon me, in column C, and I put them down here in column B. And now in these cells adjacent to them, I'm going to create a count if function. So how do we do that? Well, we go equals count if, that's our function. And now you see here that it's giving us a hint that we need a range, so it's open parenthesis. The range is the range of cells we want it to look at and count our answers and that in this case is going to be C2 to C6. We put the comma and now is the criteria. What are we counting? Well we want to count the value that's in B13. So we're going to type B13. And we'll close parenthesis. We're almost done. I want to anticipate though that I'm going to copy this formula down to the next two cells and when I do that these cell references to C2 and C6 are going to change to C3 and C7 and then C4 and C8 and so on. So I don't want that to happen so I'm going to lock those, make them absolute cell references by fixing the row with a dollar sign. B13, though, we do want to change because in the cell below we want it to look at B14. So we're going to press enter there and we find that our count for that value is 1.
Now I can grab that little corner of the cell, pull it down, let it go, and it copies that cell. Now if we were look, to look at the value in this spreadsheet, we need to double click. We'll see that, in fact, the references to cell C2 and C6 have not changed, but the reference to cell B13 changed to B14, which is exactly what we want. So that's a very easy way to count values within a range of cells. Now, once we've calculated our data, we can also graph it. And that's very straightforward. Let's just highlight both the labels and the numbers. We'll go to Insert, choose Chart. In this case, we'll choose a pie chart. And our title will be, that's really all we need to do. Notice that here we can designate whether we want to use the column, the left-hand column, or the topmost row as labels, and it guessed right that we wanted to use the column because, of course, the column is text. We click on Save Chart, and it puts our chart within our spreadsheet. However, if we want to manage things a little bit, it's very easy to just come here and move to Own Sheet. That puts the chart on its own sheet. Here's our data, Sheet 1, and our chart, Sheet 2. And we can rename that. We can come down here and say that this is question 3, chart, and click OK. So now you can see it's very easy to move from creating a form, gathering data, making sense of that data with some formulas, and from there to a chart. And that's some of the basics of collecting and using data using Google Forms.